Okay, so in this video I want to uh, set up, or at least begin to set up, um, these uh, two trigger or dual trigger puzzles uh, so that um, each of these spheres uh, needs one character um, present in each sphere and uh, then the, um, the doors will open. And these uh, spheres and triggers are um, activated uh, once uh, two characters have entered this purple sphere and uh, we have activated this dual person trigger. Uh, so if we want um, that dual person trigger to switch these on uh, we have to make sure that um, their initial state is that they are switched off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and select uh, both of these um, meshes, these interp actors that we've dragged out and I'm just going to check the hidden box under display in their properties. Uh, I'm then going to come in here and grab these lights and uh, this one as well and under its properties I'm going to uncheck enabled and what that means is that uh, even though we can still see the um, uh, the light icons and the meshes in the editor, if we come into the game, uh, those objects are actually absent. The um, they are hidden and disabled. Uh, we will need to rebuild lighting because we do have uh, two new um, toggleable lights in our scene, but we can uh, we can do that uh, between videos. Uh, now, so we need to um, tell Kismet to switch these on uh, once the purple trigger has been um, has been uh, has been flipped. And so I'm going to come in here and um, after this toggle. Uh, in fact, I'll just uh, come in and um, cop well uh, select the um, the meshes and lights. And in Kismet, I'm just going to go to new action toggle toggle. And uh, I'm just going to actually uh, bring in new object vars using those uh, those um, actors that I have selected in the uh, in the browser window. And with our toggle, uh, once this um, purple sphere has been uh, activated, or um, or rather has been um, the 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 trigger. Um, has been activated. Uh, we're just going to come in here and we're going to toggle these lights back on. Okay. Now these interp actors, um, we can't toggle these the way that we can the lights, uh, but because they are hidden, uh, we can use a different type of toggle. If we go to new action, toggle, toggle hidden, uh, we can plug the out from toggle into unhide and make these the targets. And so let's just see if that worked. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to switch to Bob, put Bob in the trigger, switch to Bill, and I just want to be able to uh, look at that corner uh, just uh, above the crosshairs there and uh, once I activate this um, this trigger you can see that the light comes on and the uh, the sphere also appears and just going over the other side you can see that it um, it has also um, activated over there so uh, what we uh, will eventually want these triggers to do is once a character is in, is in each sphere uh, we want the uh, door here to open uh, but for now all I want to do is set up the functionality 
of um, allowing the game to register when there is a character in each of these spheres. Now to do this we have to use a slightly different technique than we used here with this um, integer or integer um, and uh, what I will be um, using instead is a couple of um, touched events for the triggers uh, which will um, which will switch booleans from false to true and then we'll uh, run a check to see if both booleans are true and if they are not true do nothing and if they are both true it means that both triggers um, have someone uh, in them and uh, at, that, uh, at that point in the game it will continue on and it will open these doors. So I'm going to come in here with those triggers selected. I'm just going to go to new events using trigger 5 dot 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 and go to touch and uh, the um, I'll focus on this top one to start with and the uh, event that we're going to trigger is a new action set variable bool and apply this with touched and um, the uh, we'll just create a target boolean so just create a new boolean right clicking on that target and the value that we're going to set we'll create a new one here uh, we're going to make the B value 1 which is equal to true and um, I'll also uh, copy this and paste it and uh, when the uh, trigger is untouched I want to make sure that we set um, and I will in fact move this this out to here because we want this to actually affect the same boolean and so uh, when it is untouched we want to set this boolean back to false and so there we go just uh, arrange this a little prettier and now we want to do pretty much the same thing for trigger um, for this uh, trigger at the bottom here so I'm just going to copy this and paste it bring this down I'll just move this guy down so we can match up the spacing okay and now after each trigger is um, uh, is flipped and the uh, booleans are set to true. Uh, I want to check to see if both of them are true or if uh, both of them aren't true or one of them's true. Or, um, so essentially only, uh, only fire off if both of these booleans have been set to true. To do this I'm going to go to new condition, comparison, compare bool and uh, run it from here and the uh, boolean we're going to compare is this one and uh, I'll just uh, control C control V and uh, what I'll do is um, okay this is going to take a little bit of moving around uh, but um, we'll also run the output from this uh, boolean up to here if I can hit it and once we have checked this boolean uh, and we have found it to be true we are going to compare the next boolean and when that is true um, for now I'm just going to fire off a log so new action miscellaneous log and I'm just going to plug that into there and uh, I'll continue this in the next video